Hi, welcome back to Forensic Education. I'm Mike McCutcheon. Today we're going to cover two topics. I'm going to teach you how to use fluorescent fingerprint powder and we're also going to use fluorescent light sources or alternative light sources to locate evidence. This technology isn't new. It's actually been around since the 30s and if you've watched any cop shows, they've always using putting on their orange goggles and using their fluorescent light source to look for evidence. So what evidence are they looking for? Well, with the forensic light, you can find bone fragments, semen, urine, uh, altered documents, fibers, and fingerprints. So we're going to do some of that today, and we're going to use two different light sources today. We're going to use a, U a UV light, an ultraviolet light, and we're also going to use a blue light. The ultraviolet light, we don't need to use any goggles to filter out the light, but for the blue light, we will. So the light we're going to use today is I'm going to use what's called the battle light. I like this light because it has a plunger at the end to turn the light on. It has a dim switch. And what's nice about this is you can change the tips. So that way you don't need to carry around several different lights. You can just take the tip off and then we can use whatever light wavelength that we need. So I'm going to use the UV light to start. And the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to use my fluorescent powder to, to, to get some evidence. We're going to dust the fingerprints. I'm going to put my gloves on. And I have a couple items here that we're going to use. Now when you're using a fluorescent powder, usually you would use a feather duster. You need the tiniest amount of dust, otherwise you're going to fill in the ridges of your fingerprint and you're not going to get a good print. So I have my red brush with my red powder, my green and green, and orange and orange. So we're going to start with the orange. And just like we saw when we used magnetic powder, it does matter what powder you use. The finer the powder, the better your print's going to be. So make sure you're using a high quality powder. So I'm going to use this piece of siding. I'm just going to dust that on there. I'm going to leave that aside. And we'll use our green. Again, just the tiniest amount of powder is needed. Now with fluorescent powder, you may not be able to see the fingerprints until you use your light source. So let's start with this one. Now here's our fingerprint that we used, and this is with the naked eye without using any alternative light. Now it's pretty bright and you can see some ridges, but once we light it up, you see how much more brilliant the colors are. They stand right out and you can see the ridge detail. You would lift this print just as you would any other print. Let's look at some of our other evidence. So here's our piece of siding that we used. You can see the ridges right in the middle. And again, we're not using any filters. We're just using our light source. Now here's another piece that I did a little bit earlier. And again, if you look at it without any light, with the naked eye, I can't see any fingerprint on here at all. I'm going to use my battle light, and I contaminated it with the orange. But you can see a fingerprint in there as well. Now this one will be a little more difficult to see because it's, we're on a white background. But again, you can't see the fingerprints. Once we put our alternative light on it, you're going to see right here, there's a nice fingerprint. Now we're going to switch to using our blue light. Now the blue light is just a different wavelength to see the fluorescent powder. But with the blue light, you're also going to be able to see, and I have a chart here so we can see the difference of semen and urine. 
The same as with the UV light, you'd be able to pick those up, but we're going to use just a couple different techniques. Now what we're going to do with this is I'm just going to change the tip. Put on my blue, blue light tip. Now there's another alternative to this. If you don't have the money to spend on a, a battle light, you can also use this. This is called a micro blue. And it's just a small pen light that has a filter in it. When you're using a blue light, you need the filter because the filter actually filters out the color of the light and only allows the fluorescence to come through. That's what you're seeing. So you may not see it fluoresce until you look through the filter. But this one here is a very simple alternative. It folds up. It's very portable. But we have the battle light. It's a little more strong. We're going to use this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put my goggles on. What I have here is I have a sample sheet. And with the naked eye, and even with the filter without any light, you are not able to see any of the specimen. Once I shine my blue light on it, they stand right out. Okay, the same is going to be, now we had our other evidence. You can see how brilliant the colors are and the ridges in the detail. Let's see if we see it on some of our other evidence. And we'll look at the siding. Okay, so we saw how brilliant the colors are when we're using our fluorescent fingerprint powder or when we're using, uh, when we're looking for semen or urine or bone fragments. This technology has come a long way and the lights are very powerful. This would be very useful for you if you go to a scene and you're looking for this type of evidence. If you're sifting through dirt and you're looking for bone fragments or tooth fragments, you're going to want to use a blue light with your, your goggles or your UV light. I hope you learned something today. You can find these products at lynnpv.com. If you want to send me an email, you can contact me at mike at forensiceducation.net, and we'll see you next time.